Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. We're working on a Corvette here that is heavily oxidized in some areas. And oxidation can occur for many reasons. It can be chemical, can be environmental, can be from the sun, can be just failure from the clear coat or single stage itself. But we're going to do a little shaving, uh, a little wet sanding to remove the dead paint molecules and bring that gorgeous base coat underneath through, shining through, make it deep and clear and we're going to get to work on that today. I'll bring you along for the ride, so let's get to it. Heat, by the way, is also a major factor that can cause oxidation in painted surfaces. When exposed to heat and oxygen, it essentially forms corrosion in which the paint loses its oil content and as a result it'll dry out and the paint oxidizes and becomes dull just like these areas here. Oxidation mostly occurs on single stage paint but can happen on clear coat as well. Depending on how deep the oxidation runs, well you can shave that off and bring a nice clear surface back to life again. The first thing we want to do is protect all surrounding areas like plastic or trim or rubber just in case we bump up against it with either a pad backing plate or the wet sand paper. I personally like to use the 3M precision tape and that is kind of a lime green color or another alternative is the 3M delicate surface and that's like a lavender purple color. They both do a great job. The next thing we're going to do is remove the hash marks from the Grand Sport here. I often am asked what the hashtags on the Grand Sport stand for. Well, they're on not just this car, but many other cars. Back in the day, during the Le Mans races, they used to put the hash marks on the side of the steering wheel so they wouldn't run and get in the wrong side of the vehicle. Simply grab a heat gun, warm up that adhesive under the vinyl stripe or clear bra, and you can pull it. Pull it back on a 45-degree angle to lessen the chance of bringing some paint up with it. Depending on the age of the paintwork, there is always going to be a chance that paint can come up with the adhesive. So be careful. Take your time. Underneath is nice, fresh clear coat. We're going to return the rest of the panel to that condition. We're going to use the wet sand method. You can use a flat block if you're working large flat areas, but for the curved contoured areas, this foam block will contour to the shape and help make contact with the sheet or the trizac disc with the panel. And that will ensure that your work is effective. You can either have the sheet or trizac disc pre-soaking in a bucket or just douse it with water and then douse the panel with water as well. Starting near me and pushing away, getting the residue away from me. I will often spritz water onto the panel to keep the panel clean, clear of residue, keeping the sheet or the disc clear and that will keep my work effective as well. If you look closely, you'll see a white chalky residue slowly flow away from the block. And when I'm spraying water on the panel, that is a little bit of clear coat. That's exactly what we're doing. We're shaving away those dead paint molecules. I will often stop, rinse away the residue, dry off the panel, and check my work. From there, you can either chase imperfections a little bit further or have that conversation with the customer about expectations. In the next video, I will show exactly how much clear is being removed from the process of wet sanding during each step, so stay tuned. Thank <laughs> you. 
we're going to move on to the next step, and that's actually stepping down from 2,000 to 3,000 grit. So we're blending in a little bit. We're removing the harsher scratches with less aggressive wet sand paper, and that will actually start to clear things up. You'll get a little bit of reflection from the lights overhead out of the area just by stepping down from maybe 2,000 grit to three or 4,000 grit. From there, it's easy to polish out. All you need is a one-step or even a finished polish, depending on the clear coat you're working on. Now let me bring you in and you can closely see the work after the first two steps. The oxidation has been removed. Clarity is slowly starting to come back. All we need to do is polish out. What we have exposed now is some nice, fresh, clean, clear coat. We just need to uh, bring out the clarity. We'll use the one step here. On this particular uh, hard, stubborn clear coat, it'll be 3D1, a your fiber pad and a polisher with a 15 millimeter throw. The oxidation is gone. The sand marks have been removed. All we need to do is refine it just a little bit further, work the edges, and maybe even if you're working on soft or clear, bring in a, a finished polish or a cleaner polish, or you can even jewel it from there. It's completely up to you how far down the rabbit hole you want to chase imperfections. To refine the panel and work the edges, you just simply want to bring in smaller and smaller polishers. Simply continue this exact process all the way around the vehicle where you have the damage and the oxidation. Uh, I'll let the younger members of the staff here take over and just jump in when I want to add some pointers here or there. There's nothing, there's absolutely nothing that beats hands-on experience. You can sit in a classroom all you want. But if you want to get experience behind the methods and the tools and the products that you are using, grab some panels from a junkyard or a local body shop. They'll be more than happy to see you to get rid of those panels. Grab some horses at Lowe's, Home Depot, set them up and practice. What I'm showing you here is very important. This is the fluctuation in temperature when you're comparing machine polishing to wet sanding. You can correct safely and quickly wet sanding compared to using a dual action polisher and just repeatedly going back and forth and back and forth. And you can if you're not comfortable with wet sanding. I just want to show you that temperatures are going to spike greatly. At this point, we have pretty much the whole fender corrected. We have it brought back to life. I can concentrate now on the hood. It's, it's real strange on the hood. It's only in uh, small, skinny patterns, but it's very concentrated within those patterns, oxidizing and cracking, but I believe we can remove that damage completely. With some time and patience, that's exactly what I did here. Let me remove the masking tape. I'll grab a panel prep just to show you there's no polish residues hiding any imperfections, and I'll bring you in close to take a look.
The oxidation, the micro fractures or little cracks have also been removed and the owner can enjoy this grand sport once again. As I mentioned earlier, you can add another step depending on the budget of the package or if this is your, this is your own car and you want to chase perfection, you can step down to a fine finishing polish like the 3 daca 520 and a Rupees fine pad. Afterwards, after the correction, we're going to wash it down. There's polish residue, wet sand residue went down between many of the cracks. We're going to wash the car and pressure wash in between the joints, the cracks, the joints of the panels, all the corners, and freshen it up before protection is laid down. We'll then bring it inside, dry it off completely, open up all the doors, the hood, the trunk, the gas cap flap, and wipe down all of the edges. Now it's time for panel prep, just to make sure there are no polish residues left over that can impede the bonding process with the protectant of choice. The owner has decided to coat this vehicle. You could use a wax, a sealant, or a coating as long as you're putting some sort of protection on the vehicle to guard it from further oxidation. And that's really all there is to it. Yes, it took a little bit of time, a little bit of patience, but when you're finished, you can take a deep breath, relax, walk around, and enjoy the results. While I'm showing you the results, just a quick question, and let me know down in the comments section. In between explaining what I'm doing here, I didn't fill it with any type of music. The background noise at the shop um, is a little excessive at times, so I kept things quiet. Did you enjoy the silence with all the noise pollution nowadays, the crappy music, uh, the copyrighted music, which is quite a scam within uh, YouTube and the industry? Uh, offering it up free as copyright free and then months down the road hitting you with a copyright claim. It, um, it's best to either make the music or fill in the background noise yourself or just let it quiet. So down in the comment section, uh, either put enjoy the silence if you liked that quiet in between me explaining what we were doing or um, put in uh, the comment section uh, background music if you like uh, a little bit of soft background music um, just for a little bit of ambiance within the video this has been brian from apex detail your input helps a lot and means a lot i listen to it all and in implement the input you give me into my videos so i take that all into consideration catch you in the next video